Okay, so all the grooves have been cut in the front and the two side pieces. I was careful when setting this up to not go past the halfway mark of the thickness of the blade, or I'm sorry, the thickness of the board. Uh, the other thing that I should probably discuss is that in the inside of this groove, it's going to make a fairly uneven surface if you're using a single blade. If you were to use a triple trip grind or an alternating tooth bevel, uh, those are going to give you somewhat of an uneven surface. It really doesn't matter once the drawer bottom goes in place. Many years ago, I got into the habit of having a flat tooth grind on my blades, and that allows me to make these grooves, and they function very much in the same way a dado would. So that's what I have here, cleaning these things up. I could, if I wanted to, go a little bit thicker in the drawer front if I was worried about capture on the drawer bottom, but it would require a second setup with placing the fence back to line up both to the left and to the right of this curve. But I'm happy with this. This is going to give me enough surface for the drawer bottom to slide in. All right, so still talking about the bottom, still facing up. What I was talking about before of starting with the fence further to the right is so I can make the lowest point of the cut first, and then I will readjust so this one now captures the right side of this blade to give me the width that I'm after. I'm looking for around a quarter of an inch. If it's a little bit more, a little bit less, I can tweak that with uh, fitting the, the drawer bottom material, either by milling it thinner if I'm using a solid uh, bottom, or if it's a uh, sheet good, then I could just do a rabbit around where the bottom is on the bottom, and that's totally fine. Uh, but moving the fence over to my left as I'm working through the process enables me to make this last cut here. This last cut will be on the drawer bottom and I'm going to raise the blade and slice all the way through because on the back of the drawer you need somewhere to slide that drawer bottom in and out of. And this has got to be in alignment with all the other parts. So by doing this I'll remove that material, be able to slide the drawer bottom in and, um, and that is what makes this function. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to be doing after I've made a cut at this position is I'll flip the board around and I'll bump the fence over so I'm removing about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a little bit more, um, for air passage. So if I have the bottom where it belongs in the drawer, drawer is all assembled, it's fit into the carcass, uh, you think about, about where that air is going to escape. If I have something that is engaging inside the carcass on the top, all of this is going to be dragging across that surface here but uh, also that air is going to have nowhere to escape or to be equalized so it's going to start to be a lot more work to open up this drawer and to close it but by relieving a little bit of the width of this uh, back all of this will function much more smoothly so i'm going to set this one up and then we'll make the last two cuts front I have this little gap here on the top and so that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'll do a quick pass with a hand plane here to clean up any of the mill marks and then I'll glue this thing together. <laughs> 